So working with alcohol-based markers has been my thing for the past two years now, and I really got into working with them through a company called Copic. Copic has been leading the art supply industry in terms of fine art supplies for a really long time and considered to be one of the best in line. But today I've got something new. I've got kind of a treat here, water-based markers. Now, recently I saw this floating around on Amazon and I decided to try it out and compare it with Copic or any alcohol marker for that matter. And check out the differences, not the pros and cons, but how we can use them to achieve achieve different looks and different results. Now, before we get started, I spent $20 on this video, not sponsored by any company. So how can you help me? Get us 300 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button right down below. Leave us a little like and a comment requesting what you guys would like to see in future videos. But anyway, let's get into the video. Okay, so right away, we can notice some differences in manufacturing. This is a hexagon right here with six sides and uh, as you can see it's gonna be a lot bulkier to hold and I can already foresee some uncomfortableness in drawing uh, but it does feel it doesn't feel as bad as I thought it would uh, but with Copic we got an oval we got a nice grip here and uh, it, in terms of similarities they both got double double sides but uh, we got a brush tip and a chisel tip over here but I'm curious to find out what's actually in the Spectrum uh, Noir. And uh, it looks like this side is a bit of a fine side and um, this side is, uh, I think it should be a brush because I saw that in the packaging, but yeah, it's a brush. So we'll, I'll, I'll be interested to find out the differences between Copic brushes and these Spectrum Noir brushes and uh, see which one has better quality. I'm gonna vouch for Copic right now because that's one I've been using for the past two years, but uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have prepared some shapes here that we can do some comparisons with to see the differences between an alcohol-based marker and a water-based marker. So it looks like we have some similar colors here just to begin with. Uh, what is this? This is a begonia. So is it some type of red? I hope it is some type of red because I got a red over here. Let's bring out a less vibrant red, R27. This is a cadmium red. This is one of my go-to reds. Let's lay down the base color first, actually. We'll check out, let's see if we can get a darker red here. Here's a darker red. And uh, as you can see, if we blend that in here, then we go back to the cadmium red. This is basically how I understand uh, alcohol-based markers work. Part, part of the cool part about alcohol-based markers is that you can just keep blending and it'll just keep getting darker and darker and darker. That's that's that right there. As you can see, it's kind of a, kind of a, it gets darker as it goes. That's the cool part about blending with uh, alcohol-based markers. This is, uh, it's one of the reasons why I use them, but uh, let's check out this right here uh okay so it feels kind of like an alcohol based marker but it as you can see the texture if i zoom in here a little bit the texture is slightly different uh and the feel is also slightly different i feel like this is like a harder kind of a thing uh i want to see if we can if it's actually blendable i'm not sure if that's how you do it i'm going to try something right now and get a brush we'll see what happens so right off the bat we see that water-based markers are not able to blend by themselves but they are able to blend uh, hopefully, if we can check, uh, if, if we if we succeed with this, I've never used a water-based marker before. Uh, see if this works. And as you can see, I think we're getting kind of a blend here, actually, um, which is pretty cool. I think uh, you can actually let's see if we can do this. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. You can use this. Uh, you can just dip the brush into water, and then like you can actually create a color over here, which is pretty cool. So uh, this 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 is blendable with water, and that that could actually create a kind of a cool effect right there. Uh, but I think I used too much water on that one. So let's 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 do a bit of uh, uh, experimenting with a water-based marker down here. Okay, so one of the things I notice about these markers right here is that when you try to close the cap, you have to get it at the exact angle because if you put it in like that, it's not it's not going to go in. And you might get marker all over the place. But anyway, in this circle, so let's let's just do a bunch of like um, strokes around here. Right, so we got we got the purple, and let's see if we can get the red. As you can see, I'm already messing up my own marker because I'm not putting it at the right angle. So that's gonna be a con of that right there. Uh, even though we're not looking for pros and cons here, but never mind. I'm gonna try another blend test right here. So this one was a fail right here because I did not use it the right way. So right here, yeah, this is a, this is a slightly lighter purple, or is it? Is it? It's a it's a different shade of purple. But let's see if we can get red. Let's see what will happen. Okay, so again, it is blendable, and uh, I think it's co coming into a pretty cool gradient right here if um, I shine the light correctly. Okay, so I want to do more testing here because I'm actually very intrigued by how these this one actually turned out. Like it's a it, it was a really cool effect that came out of this because like, it's like it's like you're using markers, but then it turns into a watercolor kind of a feel. So I actually want to I actually want to experiment with that right there. Hold on, let me let me just draw this. So if we put this to the side and the tips, I think this will be interesting in drawing flowers because like, 
you're gonna be able to get like cool effects especially hold on the, i haven't tried the felt tip yet but let's just stick with the brush tip for now okay so as you can see we got a bit of a we got we got a bit of a gradient that we could potentially uh blend there and let's see what happens when you try to blend and as you can see it's turning into a kind of a a gradient and i think that's going to be the cool part of using uh these because like you can blend and like have different edges like you can have like the edges fade into red or something like that i think that's what, basically what i'm going to use this for and if you continue to add water I'm actually going to get interesting effect right there and uh, i'm not sure if you can add the marker after the water's already been laid down but that's a pretty cool effect that you can do and you can just take some perhaps color from there and then apply it to this uh these petals right there. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So I'm literally just doing a bunch of different experiments here to try to get different effects. So if, let, let's see if I can add another, let's see if what this is, this is, uh, this is blossom color. So this is, should be kind of an orange. I wanna see what happens if we add a splash of purple to the edges. So as you can see, the red is already kind of blending into orange. And it's like, I'm, I, it's basically like a colorless blender. If you take a look at alcohol-based markers, they have like a colorless blender kind of a thing. So let's try that right here. We get a purple out here. As you can see, you can get a blend, but it's kind of a different feel. Uh, this is more of a watercolor refill as this is a, it's a water-based color. So I, I think it's pretty cool for those of you who aren't as good with watercolors, you are able to get a pretty controlled feel with the, the alcohol-based markers, but you can also get a pretty cool watercolor feel with water-based markers. So I feel that it's just, it could be good for larger drawings where you got like landscapes and stuff like that. So I'm interested to try that on a drawing. So let's, let's do that actually. Let's, let's try it on a big drawing and then we're going to use water-based on one side and we are going to use alcohol-based on the other and we're going to have a pretty good view of how these two compare. Alright, so that's our comparison. I had a lot of fun with this. The effects you can get from these water-based markers are insane, especially this depth of field right here. My comfort zone obviously remains the alcohol-based pens, but I like to explore these water-based markers a lot more in the future, perhaps in another video. So stay tuned for that. Um, obviously, I do not know completely how to use these markers, and but I had a lot of fun with these, and I think that they created a really cool effect and i'd love to try them again in the future so click that subscribe button help us get to 300 subscribers thanks for watching make sure to follow us on instagram i'll link all that down below if you guys want to get this particular set of markers we'll I'll also link that down below so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time